Okay, let's kind of move from the abstract to the little bit less abstract here in video number three. I want to talk to you about relational databases compared to multi-dimensional databases. And yeah, I know we've covered this a little bit, but I want to cover some other aspects, some different perspectives with you here. All right, so for the time being, j just for the very front part of this video, suspend your thoughts of the technical terms, right? Forget about multi-dimensional or relational. Let's just talk about how users want to use the data, how they want to see it, how they want to work with the data, right? Users want to look at numbers in multiple ways. And what's the word for numbers in a data warehouse? Measures. And what's the word for how we look at those numbers, the context, the perspectives on those numbers? Okay, those are going to be our dimensions. Okay, so and I just had a, a quick example. Show me how many units we have sold in each of the U.S. states over the past five years, along with a grand total of overall U.S. sales. I also like to see this across the past 10 years with quarterly subtotals. So we're looking at different data. We're looking at different dimensions. We've got a time dimension. We've got a geography dimension. Uh, we're looking at the measures is how many units sold or produced. I don't guess it. Yeah, units sold. Right. That would be our measure. And so we have two different dimensions and it's a single measure. Right? Now, what is it called when we look at a measure across several dimensions? Right? What's it, what do you think it's called? Or can you guess what it is? I'll give you a hint. It starts with an M. <laughs> Right? It's multi-dimensional analysis. Right? When your users are wanting to look at something across two or more dimensions, this is multi-dimensional analysis. Okay? Now, in fact, there's even a Wikipedia page. This is you know, a common mathematical need to look at statistical numbers in a you know, multi-dimensional matrix here. Uh, you, you can read all of that. You can stop this and look at it if you want to. I'm not interested there's the Wikipedia page you want to kind of play with it what you're looking at down in the bottom is a multi-dimensional result set it's like the, all that text over there is too much to read but here we can see a visual of a multi-dimensional result set one dimension do you know what that is we're looking at by the way this is a baseball, uh, you know, American baseball box score. Uh, these are the teams, the Yankees and Rangers uh, across the vertical axis. The innings are here in the horizontal axis. This would be runs scored. This would be hits. This would be errors, right? Not too dissimilar, I guess, from uh, maybe cricket here a little bit if you're not familiar with American baseball there. But so we're looking at, in this case, the measures will be the numbers, right? That's the number of errors. This is the number of runs scored in the sixth inning for the Rangers. Okay? So it's multi-dimensional data value. Okay? So that's our data. That is a multi-dimensional data set. So we're doing multi-dimensional data analysis. Okay? Everybody works with multidimensional data every single day. You look at election reports. You see the candidates along the vertical axis. You see the, the locations, the states, the province, the county, the postal code, whatever yours may have uh, along the top. And then you can see the percentages or the number of votes as the measure that we're looking at, the baseball box score. Anytime you're using a group by statement in SQL, you can look at multidimensional data. And your users want to look at that. That's just the way that we think of data. It's the way we work with data. Everybody's familiar with that. Now, what they don't know is that it has a fancy name like multidimensional data, right? I mean, that's for you and me. We don't have to encumber them with the, the technical jargon, if you will, right? <laughs> All right, so relational data, generally not multidimensional. Uh, this is the sample, uh, you can see it right here. Uh, in case you have the samples installed, you can just run this and take a look at that. This is the AdventureWorks 2008 database. And all I'm doing is looking at what's stored in the person.person .person table. Person, for those of you who aren't maybe familiar with this SQL, that's the schema. And then this is the object. Okay, so in the person schema, a schema is like a container, 
like a box. We can have containers um, that store generally related objects. Okay. So a schema contains many, one or more objects. And so we're looking in the person schema for a person object. Okay. Uh, one way to uh, think about this is imagine, let's see if I can draw this. No, that's the wrong. Oh, let's see. I'm so close. And that's not it. There it is. Sorry. Right. So you, everybody knows what this is, right? So you know a filing cabinet, right? And so here's your little handle, right? Right. So your database is like this big filing cabinet, and this drawer is the person schema, and this drawer, let's say, is the sales schema. Right. And so when we say select all from person dot person, we're opening up the person file cabinet, and we're going to pull out the folder called person. Now that's the 30 second intro to what is a schema in SQL. There's more to it. I, we use it for uh, security reasons as well, but that's kind of the idea. What I'm taking a look at here is one dimensional data. Uh, this is uh, like, for example, um, coming down here, let's just isolate on Mr. Joseph, Joseph, I guess, I don't know the last name, so I can't really determine uh, that one. Uh, but for this, you know, there's not, uh, you know, this particular title refers to his title. It doesn't refer to his title in this location or along this dimension. This is a single dimension. And this is how your relational data is generally stored. Now, we can work with multidimensional data with relational databases in our queries. We generally don't store them in a relational fa or a uh, multidimensional format. For us to run a query, and by the way, I've attached this as a SQL file in this video, so look in the zip file for a .sql file with the exact same name as this video file with just a different extension. Okay, um, That's the SQL. So notice that we have two tables. We are joining the tables. We are doing a count to come up with how many rows occur. I don't need you to understand this uh, here, but notice that for us to produce multi-dimensional data, which is what we're actually seeing now here, we had to join. Okay? We had to work with multiple tables. So what we're seeing now, multi-dimension, is 15 represents Allen's sales in 2003. So this is a multi-dimensional view. To the number of units is the measure, and we're looking across a time dimension and a person dimension. Right? So the person dimension or a customer goes this way, the vertical axis, and time is along the top. Okay? It's a multidimensional data set, a multidimensional result set. Okay? All right, now you can make your relational result sets ultra fancy. Uh, load them into reporting services, create a fancy matrix. Oh man, you could do all kinds of stuff. Those of you who've gone through course 162, my reporting services course, we, you know, we did some pretty awesome looking reports just based on relational data. Okay. The problem, there's a heavy price. Okay. The problem is, is that that relational database, to produce a report like we see here, we might have to read 10 million rows across 26 tables or 14 tables. Okay? It takes a long time to read 10 million rows and to produce this particular report. It might take five minutes for that. Okay? Your users don't want to wait. They don't want to, every time they want to know an answer, they don't want to have to wait five minutes, 20 minutes, two hours for the report to run. Right? That's the challenge of the relational database. It's optimized for write activity and to avoid duplicates, not optimized for analytics. Okay? So let's talk about now multidimensional. When you work with analysis services, you're either going to be working with a data mining model, we'll talk about those in chapter 11, or a multidimensional cube. Okay? That's what we're talking about in this section of chapters four, five, and six, okay? So notice our little 3D piglet down there. If you've got your 3D glasses that were supplied with the course, you just download the 3D glasses, right? Yeah. 
multi-dimensional databases are not called multi-dimensional because they're 3D or 4D, as it may be, right? They're just physical structures just like a regular database would, like a regular um, access database or Excel spreadsheet or a SQL Server database. It's just files in a file system, right? I mean, there's nothing special about that. That term, multi-dimensional, just talks about how we think of the data, right? How we work with the data, not how it's physically stored. All right, so to sum up, multidimensional databases are all about storing pre-calculated aggregates. I hammered that home in Chapter 2 so much, I'm, I'm not going to kill you with that in this chapter here, across multiple dimensions. Okay? You remember we talked about roll-up and hierarchies and how all that worked there? The data is pre-calculated. Because it's pre-calculated, the users don't have to wait 5 minutes, 20 minutes, 2 hours for their report to run. It's instant. Okay? Theoretically, we hope it to be, right? And in cubes, we don't worry about tables, columns, and rows. We deal with cubes, measures, and dimensions. Okay? All right, enough chatter here with the lecture. Let's actually get our hands dirty. Uh, over the next couple of videos, we're going to be creating and managing and working with our first uh, analysis services database.